All right, hi everyone. It's time for the final talk slot for today. Um, so for this one, we have Victor Fernandez de Alba joining us from Sorrento. Victor is the CTO at Kit Concept and has been around the Plum community since 2006. Now, Victor and I have served together on the board for the last few years. He has done a lot of work that has gone into core Plone, including Volto, Plone 6, uh, and helped build the current PloneConf.org. So Victor is going to be showing off the new Plone style guide called Quanta. So go ahead, Victor. Thank you, Chrissy. Yeah, let's start with a little bit of history. Uh, for those you don't know him, uh, he, this is Albert Casado. He's a former colleague of mine back in my university times in the Barcelona Tech University. And he's a long, long time, uh, long friend uh, of mine as well. He's been contributing the Plum community since I dragged him into, into it uh, also in, back in 2014. We both implemented together uh, the bus. Thank you. The Barceloneta, the Plum 5 Barceloneta uh, theme here in these premises when we are uh, now uh, in Sorrento in the Plum Open Garden in 215. So one day he called me, uh, one day he called me uh, because he wanted to show me one nice thing that he done one day. So we met in Barcelona and we want to have an evening stack together, a snack together. Uh, involving uh, Habu or Ham, of course. Um, yeah, we always do that when you go together in Barcelona. And he showed me what he did uh, in the free time for the next generation, next generation of Plone. And it was Pastanaga UI and Pastanaga icons. I, I was blown away. I mean, it was amazing. He showed that he did no more, no less than 250 icons back in the day. And, and then the, the whole uh, Pastanaga UI was amazing, right? Uh, so it was not until uh, the late 2017 that we managed to uh, implement Pastanaga UI back in the original Plone React uh, code. Initially, Plone React was born in 2016 and it initially had and used the semantic UI's default CSS. So it was a little bit uh, ugly uh, back in the day, but uh, yeah, I said late 2017, we managed to sneak Pastanaga in uh, Plone React. And lately when Plone React eventually became Volto, then uh, Pastanaga UI was finished and was delivered with Volto itself. This happened, uh, yeah, as I said, just in time for the Tokyo Plum Conference. And, uh, oh my God, yes, Albert has a passion for designing logos and he delivered through the years. So the first logo that he made us was for the Plum Mosaic Sprint in Barcelona. That was also in 2014. And to be honest, it's one of the nicest logos that, uh, he ever done and is probably one that I like the most. Although, sorry, it doesn't follow the logo for code of conduct or guidelines, right? But still, is one of my favorites. Oh, magnific. So, and then he followed with the guillotina logo one. And again, the uh, Plum Conference logo of 2017, which I also loved. And he came to me not long ago and he told me. So the truth is that I only wanted to update Volto's logos because I didn't like this, this mask thingy that much. And I always not 100% uh, sure of it. And somehow, somehow I ended up by create, creating Quanta as well. This is the Volto updated logo that we had from that time. So, and we not only get that, but we also got Quanta. So what's Quanta? Quanta aims to be an evolution of Pastanaga UI. And it, uh, Albert created it to keep up with the design trends and the 
modern UX uh, perspective and also taking into account the latest feedback that we had from clients, right? So, <clears throat> and it became a reality and this is how it looked like. So after the story, welcome to my talk. I'm Victor Fernandez de Alba, I work at Kit Concept, and today I will present to you Quanta, the new Plones style guide. So what's a style guide, right? So we, we all know and we've heard that, and we also uh, probably took a look at different style guides, but probably without any noticing or, but the style guide is a document, is a, place is a place of reference, a single source of truth that developers and designers alike use to check out as a design baseline and look at feel for a given project. So yes, a style guide is documentation. And the main goal of this documentation is to ensure the communication because uh, between teams and these uh, and these actors in a in a in a team, especially developers, designers, and US UX experts. <clears throat> Why a style guide matters? It allows us to deliver faster. So uh, not only projects, but also uh, tasks, also, um, I don't know, small pieces of our content or, or pages, right? It ensures design consistency through all our pages and all our, uh, the, the elements that form that pages. It's a one-stop guide of reference, especially for new team members that doesn't know anything about the project and they have uh, this, uh, point this entry point for look into how the project look like and how is the relationship between all these small elements of the project. The code and the design are linked, right? So, so you have a reference on how the element should be coded and then transfer to the, the code to achieve what the element promises. Also, it allows us to standardize everything that we do. So every time that we got a requirement for the client, we go there and, and we say, okay, this requirement, this, this is uh, element that the client is, uh, want me to implement in their project. So uh, I already have something that looks like it, or can I made up the thing that the client is requiring me up to, um, from other basic elements that my design guide have, right? So I can grab these and these and these and these basic elements, put them all together and form the thing that the client is expecting without me having to reinvent the wheel and uh, came up with new things, right? And it also allows, you, allows us not to repeat ourselves. So it allows us to be dear I and use code, reuse code through not only in the same project, but probably amongst different projects. Then you all will also heard about design systems, right? And you could ask, yeah, how about them? So a design system is a single source of truth that holds record of the code standards and the details of values of a different uh, basic blocks, components, and elements and patterns of a site of an or an application. And this collection of things are meant to be reusable and combine themselves in a way that they play well together. So if I put two elements, one besides another, they are not going to cringe and they're going to look what looks fine, right? So I have this bunch of bricks. Let's, we could think about bricks and then we can put them together to look, to build our, um, our sites. So it's, this collection is, is a collection of pre-built blocks. And 
ranging from basic to complex, right? Because we, we can have a, 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 an element that is as small as a, as a button or as a link, right? To bigger ones that are co uh, composed of different of the basic ones to, for example, form a, a Volto block, right? They play way, well with each other, as I said. So if I put one after another, they look fine. And they also allow you to standardize code and don't replace ourselves. So this approach, the blocks approach, works extremely well with Plone 6 blocks model, of course, because Plone 6 is made of blocks, at least the page, but not only the page or the pages, but also the elements that, com that, that compound the frame, like the header, the footer, and other uh, helper elements or support elements, right? And nowadays, websites are designed uh, precisely following this approach, the modular approach. So the websites are, are modular, so we can break the design of a, of a project into the, these small blocks that are from our design uh, system is composed. And then just with this, after these slides, we only have to uh, put the pieces of the puzzle together, right? So immediately this uh, approach maps directly to how Plone 6 uh, behaves, how Plone 6 works with the blocks model. So Quanta is a style guide or, it, or is a design system. And it's both, it aims to be both because we need it to be a style guide where the basic uh, approach of how to el the elements behave and how they should look like. And this design system that has this collection of blocks that play well with each other met and we can use them as reference for building not only Volto itself, but also on Plone 6, but also our projects, right? So yeah, this presentation should have been Meet Quanta, Plone Style Guide, and Design System, but it was too long and I wanted just to keep it simple because at the end, people know about design, uh, Plone Style Guides uh, sorry, style guides and not design systems, right? But yeah, you're correct. So using this uh, new approach, using a design system, show us that through over time, we had different workflows to communicate, communicate with uh, designers and UX uh, experts, right? Uh, how it started, it started with PDF, uh, PDF files or image files. Right? We all been there where you had to got the color of a specific things using a color picker and then yay, yay, this this one and then grab the, the X value and they'll go, go to the CSS and put it there. Then it bolts and then somehow the designers and uh, got lazy and they just send you the, the, <laughs> the Photoshop files and then you had to have Photoshop in your machine, of course. And then yay, with Photoshop, you, you could use the color picker of Photoshop and then uh, look uh, how the things were made and Adobe Illustrator and things like that. But right now there are tools that uh, facilitate and ease, ease this communication like Figma or Sketch or Zeppelin or Adobe XD, right? So in this, so the, the design system fits very well into these new workflows, right? And we have to learn how how to adapt to times and start using also these, these tools, right? So our style guides and our, or our design systems not only become something that is static, but they are, they are living, they are, not, they are alive. And we have uh, also other kind of tooling like a storybook or a style guide list in the React world that allow us to create this living style guide. Uh, it, they use the actual implementation 
of the components of the uh, real components that we are use, where our design system is is made of and by using the real components and the real css we can, we have the ability to have a playground that the users or the members of the team can play with and you have live components that you can play with and make them behave differently to test them or to look if the client could ach uh, could achieve the requirements with this component right and we for this we have quanta.pastanavagar.io which is the first initial implementation of this style guide so first of all quanta is not a thing is not done it's not finished but we are on it and while we are on it we are building this living style guide at the same time that we are building it it looks a little bit like this so we have a storybook set uh storybook is being used by plum six right now and it also allow us to have these components documented in a way that as i said uh you can play with them and you can even try them and see how they behave and look like so right now i want us to so to note that we are arriving a point that we're using another time of development with another workflow that is the style guide driven development or but as said storybook driven development in our case since we're using storybook so i found very very uh useful this workflow where you start like you used to start so you unit test then write the code then make the unit test work then write the acceptance test, make the acceptance test pass and, and make the, uh, fix the, the bugs that could come out of it. And lastly, write the storybook element of the component that you're writing, right? And what do you win by doing this? So it's amazing how much you learn by isolating your component because you normally use uh, to develop a component inside a, a, a context, right? So it has things around, but it could be that by having these things around, you miss things, miss uh, bugs, right? And by isolating your component, you, mm, you realize that uh, you ha could have wrong margins, wrong paddings, CSS leaking issues. So in the context is working well because may might be that a CSS is leaking and it looks uh, it makes your component looks fine but when you is isolated then you see that that CSS is missing because it was leaking from somewhere else so it's very very valuable that you finally do the story book not only for having it documented and in your living style guide but also for yourself for the sake of uh, completion on the component itself. So as I said, in Plone 6 uh, front end, we also have a storybook. It's also an ongoing effort because as you might uh, imagine, building a storybook uh, for every component that we have is hard. But the idea from now on is that if you develop something from the core, you should provide always the storybook counterpart so we are feeling this storybook bit by bit right right now this is how it uh, looks like you can check it out in, in this url as well and we have yeah uh, for now uh, some widgets for example the object widget which is this one but we, we have also others like the object browser or yeah some uh, some other widgets or uh yeah uh basic things like like the breadcrumbs for example so look into uh, take a look into it because it's very very uh powerful and it gives you some insights that otherwise you won't have and it's not only useful for clone six or for quanta itself it could be also useful for your add-ons or for your projects so if you're building your project and you uh, at the same time you build your storybook it's super valuable for you 
your team and your client that is seeing live how uh, it, his product uh, evolves and is built with. So we need help. <laughs> we need help, please. Uh, so we have, of course, a lot of uh, made up components in Clone 6 front end. And yeah, if you want to give it a try, take a look at the existing ones, build the environment uh, on your machine and start uh, yeah, uh, creating them. Back to Quanta. Uh, Quanta has uh, uh, some basic elements that we will, uh, as you will imagine, and we'll have to build them because as I said, Quanta is not finished. It's, we barely started. And we start now the effort to uh, accomplish having Quanta finished. For now, we, we have, uh, we have uh, focused and we, we know that we should focus in the same fundamentals like Pastanaga Y has, so which is this one. So we should simplify and focus. Don't make the user think, let the user go with the flow. The user should also have a happy path action, right? So the user doesn't have to think more about no, now what's next, right? Have a structural visual hierarchy as building blocks. We have to earn the trust of the user every day. So it, it's not enough that we start well and then all of a sudden we do uh, a thing that is not consistent with what we did before. And then the user gets like, what? I mean, this is not what I used to be. I used to not to have to choose. And now these guys made me choose between a uh, hundred of combinations, right? And make feel the user that he's understood and treat him as a person. So these are the fundamentals that we don't have to miss uh, to get out of sight. We've been working on the strategy for Quanta these days. We, it's a still uh, a work in progress, but as a basics, uh, we will, the, the aim is to have it uh, at some point uh, during, yeah, I mean, we, we're not going, we're not going to promise anything, right? But the, the first um, target is that we deliver in packages that doesn't harm the release of, of Plone 6, right? So we will have some niceties from Quanta in Plone 6, but we will not uh, jeopardize the release of Plone 6 because we are still building Quanta. And that's also a premise that we want to have. So yeah, we will build up uh, um, regard, yeah, depending on how uh, Quanta develops through the years, through the, through the you know, better through the next month. So I will, I'm going to be optimistic on this. And yeah, and here the strategy, what I, uh, I can show is something that, yes, we uh, already decided is that we, Quanta, with Quanta, you will be able to build a theme with any framework CSS or design system that you choose. And then the CMS UI of uh, Plone 6 uh, or uh, the future version of Plone will be Quanta and will be built in this uh, using the Quanta design system. So you could basically remove the theme and you still will have Quanta and the um, management screens working and you could replace the theme with whatever other thing that you want and Quanta will, CMS UI will be still be there. So that's a, a summary of what we are thinking of. Okay, so now <clears throat> what we're going to do in the last, uh, in these last minutes is to uh, show you Quanta, right? You, you are all waiting for this. Uh, of course, since I'm mostly unprepared, I wanted to make some, some nice animation. So I'm clicking here, I'm clicking there, then I get this, but I'm going to walk through, through it, right? And you, <laughs> you're going to pretend that this animation happened, right? So. This is uh, the main, the homepage 
uh, it could change. It's, an, it's a first prototype of what the theme part of Quanta could be, right? Then if we click into the login, we will go to this kind of screen that, yeah, we will see a trend in Quanta that Quanta is very clean, very clean and go straight to the point, right? Without uh, too much uh, um, uh, cluttered things and, and the likes. Then once we are uh, logged in, then we get the toolbar. This is a, a slightly revamped toolbar from uh, Pastanaga Y, right? And it has its collapsed version, which is a little bit fancier uh, than the one before, right? Is this. So then we have uh, the more button. This is the revamp more button, which we, we, where we can change the state, change the uh, view or uh, accessing to other views like the uh, sharing view or the history view. Then we have the add more, the add uh, content button that will show these uh, first two more important elements. Right, that probably will be not probably, but uh, I'm sure of it that it, they it will be configurable, and you could put here the most uh, useful uh, content that your client uh, want to use. Then the rest of the contents below. This is the personal tools menu with the usual access to your profile, your settings, and the set setup, and that you can change your uh, profile picture from here and also log out up in the right corner. These are uh, the mobile views of uh, some of them. As you will see, these, uh, the menus comes from down. It, they used to come from up, but they come from up, uh, from down in a drawer fashion. And let's see the folder contents. So the main uh, feature of the folder contents is, is that it resembles an app on itself. So it doesn't have the, the top part, the, the header or the footer, and focus on what the folder content should do, which is manage content, right? We don't need the frame of the site here. We don't need the constraints of the site uh, uh, main content with, right? We want to use the, the whole uh, space that is available uh, both vertical and horizontal, right? So this is, uh, yeah, some of the things. The folder context has a, a add content button as well here on the right. And you can select and then the tools appear on the top following this, this approach that simplify things. So I won't show the tools if the user cannot use them. So only when you select things, you can, uh, have access to the tools. Then a quick mobile view, also with some uh, modal, in case that you want to delete something, also in a drawer fashion. <clears throat> I, will, I, will, I will hurry because they, they give me, yeah, the... the um... So this is a, a, fo a form, normal form with, uh, with no blocks. Then we're going to create an object, uh, a content object here, and we have here a document where you can type your title, type the description, and there you can create, sorry, uh, here in the cough, you can open the, uh, the metadata of the site here in the sidebar, and you can close the sidebar. And one of the things is that the sidebar by default, it's not present only when the user wants to show it. That could change uh, depending on the content type. Yeah, but for now it's going to be like this. We have uh, an accordion there for accessing the different uh, tabs. And we have this, which is the, the, what we call the Quanta toolbar. And it will be a toolbar that is present in every block. So from this toolbar, we can access the most useful uh, tools that we can have to act upon our, our block. Yeah, for example, paragraph titles, blah, 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 right? And for the remove uh, block comes, comes in here. 
here it will also place to place the cut, the copy, uh, and things like that. Then there we have the block chooser. This is the block chooser. This is an image. This is a bro the browser content, uh, the object browser content. So we can choose uh, the content. We will have different views on the chooser. We, can, we could search, then add the image. Right. This is the sidebar of the of the image, and finally, this is uh, the mockup of the listing, the listing block that will be updated when we will put the creator the criteria here in the middle, and then when we are editing the criteria, we will have it in this fashion on the sidebar. Then this is the uh, the a little bit the design of it, and one last thing. So Quanta will have a dark mode. Okay. Thank you, Victor. Uh, yeah, everything there looks great. Um, I'm sure there'll be people that want to be asking questions in Jitsi. So go ahead and hop over there. And put the hey, link thank in you, Slack. Please see. <laughs> yep. And uh, join us back in about 10 minutes for the annual meeting. <laughs>